Welcome to Electra Online. This is such an interesting circuit, I thought we can take a look at it in a different way to see if there's any difference in the results. So what we have here now is the same circuit, the same source, but the source now will put out a 10 amp current before time equals zero. At time equals zero, the current source will simply go back to zero. And more than that, we're actually going to remove it and have it as an open circuit for time greater than zero. So essentially, time less than zero, the source gives you a 10 amp current, greater than zero, we get no current from the source, and essentially we're just going to remove it and simply have the LC oscillating circuit. So, what does the result look like? What will the current as a function of time and the voltage as a function of time look like in this case? Again, we'll have to calculate all the various things. So, let's see here, what is the initial voltage at t equals zero? So imagine that this current has been flowing for a while before time reaches zero. No current will flow through the capacitor. Only current will fl flow through the inductor, but there will not be any voltage drop because we have a steady state current. Notice that the voltage across the inductor only exists if there's a change in the current. So before zero with no change in the current, there's no voltage drop. Therefore, there's no voltage across the capacitor, which means there's no charge on the capacitor. Simply current will flow around like that. The capacitor is simply ignored, so to speak. So we could say that the initial voltage will be equal to zero. What about the initial current? Well, that will not be zero because current has been flowing. 10 amp current has been flowing through the inductor. So at time equals zero, when we remove the source, the inductor will have a current flow of 10 amps. And what will be the steady state current in this case? Well, it turns out there will not be a steady state current because once you remove the source, you simply have current oscillating back and forth and there will be no steady state component. So that will be equal to zero. What about the alpha? Well, the alpha can be calculated by using the equation R divided by 2L. Why R divided by 2L? Because this will act like a series circuit, not a parallel circuit. The current will just simply go back and forth, up and down, up and down, or left and right, however you want to call it. And so that means there is zero resistance divided by 2L, which is equal to zero for the alpha. There's no damping factor whatsoever in the circuit. What about the natural frequency of the circuit? Omega sub naught is equal to 1 over the square root of L times C, which is 1 over the square root of the inductor, which is 20, times the uh, capacitor, 0 0.2, which is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. That gives you 1 half, or 0 0.5. All right, that's the natural frequency of the circuit. So this is definitely where alpha is smaller than omega sub naught, so therefore this is an under damped case and in this case of course since there's no resistance there's no damping factor at all undamped case all right in that case the equation will look as follows it will be the current as a function of time is equal to a1 times the cosine of omega t and now we have the damp omega, but of course that will be zero because there's no damping factor at all, so it's A1 cosine omega t plus A2 times the sine of omega sub naught t, and there's no steady state component to that. And of course in this case omega is 0 0.5, so I as a function of time is equal to A1 times the cosine of 0 0.5 t plus A2 times the sine of 0 0.5 t. So, do we have the equation for the current? Yes, except we don't know what A1 and A2 is. So to do that, we need to go to the following. We need to say that I, when time is equal to zero, is equal to, coming up here, 10 amps. So it's equal to 10 times A1 times the cosine of zero, which is one, plus A2 times the sine of zero, which is zero. So that's actually zero. And wait a minute, I'm missing an equal sign. There we go. <laughs> I was missing my equal sign. So here we could clearly see that A1 is equal to 10. What about A2? Well, to do that, we need to find the derivative of that function, so di dt, because essentially what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and realize that di dt is equal to v over l. And the initial state when time equals zero of di dt will be the initial vo of 
not velocity, but the initial voltage over L, of course. And the initial voltage is zero, so that will be equal to zero. So the IDT, when time equals zero, will be equal to zero. So first, let's find the derivative of the current with respect to time. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, so we get negative 0.5 times A1 times the sine of omega sub naught t. And of course, we already know what omega sub naught is. So let's plug in the 0.5. And then the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so that's plus 0.5 times A2 times the cosine of 0.5 t. So now, we're going to plug now we plug in the IDT when t equals 0 equals 0. So the IDT when t is equal to 0 equals 0. And that equals this. Now the sine of 0 is 0, so the first term drops out. The, the cosine of 0 is 1, so we get 0.5 A2, which implies, of course, that A2 is equal to 0. So now we have both constants, A1 and A2, and A2 goes to 0, which means that I can now write the equation for the current as a function of time with A2 being equal to 0. So I, as a function of time, is equal to A1, which is 10, times the cosine of 0.5t, and the second term with the A2 drops out. So here is our equation that gives us the current as a function of time. So now we need to get the voltage as a function of time. So for that, we're going to use this equation right here, where the voltage is L times di dt. So voltage equals L times di dt. And di dt is defined right here, remembering that A2 goes to 0, and A1 being 10 times negative 0.5 is negative 5. So we can say that this is equal to L, which is 20, times negative 0.5 times 10, which is negative 5, times the sine of 0.5t. And multiplying that times 20, say so voltage as a function of time is equal to negative 100 times the sine of 0.5t. And there's the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. There's the current through the inductor as a function of time. Notice that one is a sine function, the other one is a cosine function. This has a negative 100 when t equals 0. And, well, actually, no, because when t equals 0, this is 0. So it looks like, again, it's a good idea to go ahead and graph this, put a table of values on there, graph it, and get a feel for the, the relationship between the current and the voltage. So let's do that on the next video, then. But at least now we have the two equations for the current and the voltage in this particular case, knowing that the circuit goes from here to here. Current stops at time equals 0. We remove the current source, we have an open circuit, and the current just oscillates back and forth between those two components. A very classic circuit with the concept of the LC circuit. So that is how it's done. Do I have it right? 10 times the cosine of 0.5t and negative 100 times the sine of 0.5t. Okay, looks good.